welcome to part two of our BL podcast here on Read Right to Left. Part two of our extravaganza. As always, I am Simply G, joined by my wonderful co-host Ray from Whimsical Pictures. And today, you guys had some wonderful questions and hopefully we answered a lot of them, but we do have some more to answer as well as give some recommendations to people who may be looking for some new titles to read, maybe wanting to get into this genre itself. So I think we kind of covered the sort of the good, mm -hmm. the bad, and mm -hmm. the ugly. So <laughs> maybe we can get into recommending some series that are good for beginners and good in general. Mm -hmm. yep. One that is very popular, just won over everyone last year, is Go For It Nakamura. Obviously, yep. very, very sweet about a teenage boy who is closeted at school and has a big fat crush on one of his classmates, but is very, very shy, mm -hmm. so doesn't really have any sort of relationship with him at all, and it's about him slowly growing out of his shell and actually befriending this other boy. I have yep. heard that there's a sequel to this, and I really hope we get it in English, hopefully considering how popular this book was or is we will seven seas keeps hinting at it yeah so yes and seven seas has yet to let me down so yeah it's very very sweet i really like the art style as well in particular with this it's very retro very yeah. retro and very i don't know it's just oh it's just very cute <laughs> it was, oh. yeah it's cute it's very satisfying I, um, one of the things i really like about go for it nakamura mm -hmm. is that nakamura himself has absolutely no doubts about being gay. Yeah. The series uses the word. He's just like, hi, I'm gay. Mm. In his voiceover, he's not out to anyone. You know, he's not like, questioning. I'm only gay for you. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'm gay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is really refreshing because that is something you used to see a lot in that 90s, early 2000s manga where it yeah. is like i'm only gay for this one person like i'm not really gay just I... I feel like we still see it a lot oh we do see it it's definitely there a lot of times there will be and this is really annoying for me as a bisexual person mm -hmm. what's popular now is the bottom mm -hmm. will be out usually mm -hmm. usually one of them will be out mm -hmm. i've seen some where the top is out some where the bottom is out one of them will be out as gay mm -hmm. and then the other one is straight until they meet this guy and then they never call that what it is which is bisexual or pansexual mm -hmm. i hate it yeah no it's not <laughs> I a hate good it thing. a lot i have to say it's in nakamura there is a point where he like gets the heart thumping yeah for a girl and See, rather than being like I, oh am i straight he's like oh i might be bisexual like it doesn't even yeah come up that he he's not gay in some capacity but i liked that actually no that's what i'm saying it's it's really he, nice that that was there yeah See, like he gets the doki doki <laughs> for his crush's sister uh -huh. and he's like oh am i bi mm -hmm. and i was like you used the word. Yay! You used the forbidden word. <laughs> <laughs> there are some character like I I don't remember any off the top of my head, but I'm sure I've read character like a couple series where characters have said they're bisexual. Actually, uh, again, going back to like I hate to keep plugging the series because it's not good. Um, but World's Greatest First Love, one of the characters <laughs> in that is bisexual, Yukina. Mm -hmm. And he says that like very explicitly, like, yeah, I'm bisexual. And he doesn't have any qualms with now being in a relationship with a guy who is like just gay, very, very out and proud about it. But I'm, I feel like there is some, but I can't, aside from that, <laughs> that um, example. There's um, the emperor in the story of Sai and Koku. Mm. They use the word once, mm -hmm. I think, because he's bi. Yeah. I feel like there's, there's not more... a lot. George from Paradise Kiss. Yeah. I feel like there's they more in that. shoujo manga, like just straight 
shoujo manga than there is in BL, which is unfortunate because obviously with that you have a heterosexual relationship, so that's like mainly focusing on that character. Yeah. Actually, I just read yesterday uh, the rules for or the rule of love or lovers by Erika Sakurazawa, which is a Jose manga. Um, and that mm-hmm. that one has a character who is like the main male character is bisexual. Before he meets this girl, he's in a relationship with a guy. And then mm-hmm. after the relationship he has with the girl, he goes back to that guy. Like, it's not really a question of his sexuality. He's like, I can, like, what's wrong with falling in love with people from any gender? Like, it, I don't really care about the gender of someone when I'm falling in love with them. Which I found was, considering the age of that, Jose was <laughs> nice. There's, I mean, there's bisexual characters around, but they're few and far between. And as I said, a lot of them come from shoujo, so a lot of them focus and on... And most of them don't use the word. Yeah. So, oh. like, you'll have a character like Jaha or whatever. Uh-huh. I love him. He's not promoting <laughs> the greatest, like, bisexual stereotypes. <laughs> But I love him anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's like, he'll be like, I don't like labels. I love beauty in all its forms. (laughs) I'm like, use the damn word. Just just say bisexual. (laughs) It's so much easier. We have a word. We exist. Yeah. One thing that's really nice about Shinde, Mm -hmm. and this goes for both of the titles we've gotten from them in English so far, is that they seem very interested in broadening what BL can be. So Go For It Nakamura is a story about friendship, overcoming anxiety. Mm -hmm. It's a really wacky, like, hijinks-filled slapstick comedy. It doesn't have any romance in it, but it does have a gay protagonist Mm -hmm. pursuing somebody. And then we have Total Eclipse of the Eternal Heart, which... Also doesn't really have romance in it. Yeah. It it, it kind of does. It has infatuation, which is obviously yeah. different. Obsession. From, yeah. Obviously different from like love in, or at least like, yeah. romantic love. So it has gay characters and relationships between men, mm-hmm. but not in a positive way. Yeah. <laughs> not in a way that's meant to be fetishized mm-hmm. or sexy. It is a horror manga yeah. through and through yeah. about the darkest corners of humanity, which is not something you see in BL very often. Yeah. Usually BL horror is in it for the fetishy mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, it's very few and far between with uh, BL horror manga. Yeah, it's very few and far between with uh, BL horror manga. I do recommend Total Eclipse of the Eternal Heart if you like fucked up horror. Yeah, it's it's not Trigger one Trigger that... warning for everything. <laughs> yeah, it's not one... Like, when I got it... Because I read it, I love it, I really appreciate how flexible Sunde is. But when I was talking about it, I was like, even if you like go for a Nakamura, maybe a bit wary picking this up. Like, m- research it beforehand because it's yeah. not one. So if you like <laughs> Lychee Light Club, <laughs> you will probably like Total Eclipse of the Eternal Heart. Yeah. It's, it's definitely <laughs> on the complete opposite side of the spectrum to Nakamura. And in a good way. Like, it's, it's just... Yeah. They're two very, very different books, which is a testament Again, to the author. Really broadening yeah. what BL can be. But if you're looking for something as like an introduction into BL as a genre, Nakamura. I would go for Nakamura. Yeah, definitely Nakamura. I would go for go for it, Nakamura. <laughs> yes. And coming from that, in regards to a really good, I think, introductory series to BL is Seven Days by Vinio mm-hmm. Tachibana and Rihito Takarai. Many people may know Takarai from their solo series, Ten Count, which is not a series mm-hmm. I like, but is very popular. <laughs> this is not that series. That one definitely plays more to the power dynamics. and uh, in- I feel like that's an example of how the more toxic dynamics show up in fetish manga yes. these days. Yes, yes. Because it's very much 
the fetish of falling in love with your psychiatrist. Yes. Uh, someone who, I guess, is in this powerful place that really, you, it's, yeah, it's like this forbidden love. I mean, aside from being mm-hmm. gay, but like, don't be having <laughs> relationships with your psychiatrist. It's not going to work out. Yeah. But I can see how some people are into that. Yeah, absolutely. It's not like, this is how relationships are. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, oh, I thought it it would be hot to write a story about a guy and his psychiatrist. Oh, it's so sexy. (laughs) Yeah, that forbidden love. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And honest, like everyone who's listening, if you enjoy any of these series that I don't enjoy that cool like totally cool i absolutely i'm not gonna judge you for it we all have our weird things we're into no judgment here but for like actual recommendations it's not 10 count isn't one that i'd be like oh yeah everyone should read this because i don't yeah. think that everyone should read it i do think there's i would a recommend lot of... it to someone who's into that stuff Exactly. For seven days, Takarai only does the art for it. She is an incredible artist. There's no doubt about yeah. that. It is. She does has a beautiful style. Uh, but Venio Tachibana writes the story. June, the English publisher, released it previously in two volumes. Those are very, very out of print. But thank you to Sublime, who have relicensed it. They're going to be releasing a two-in-one omnibus sometime in the year. So... If you are wanting to read it, then you can check it out there as well. Um, But it is one that I think that a lot of people, it is very easy to get into. It's even a little, just one step more than Nakamura, where Nakamura obviously is about friendship and like there, there's no real romantic aspect to it. Seven Days does have that romantic part to it. So it's not explicit. It's not like a typical what a lot of people as we've mentioned numerous times it's not really the pwp it's not porn without plot it (laughs) it is this slow build-up of a relationship between two characters and them slowly growing closer and then at the end having this satisfaction of them coming together as a romantic couple so If you're not aware, Seven Days is a story about two high school boys. One who every week he's asked out by someone, a girl, on Monday and he gives them a week to make him fall in love with them in order to find someone that he loves. And if they're unsuccessful, he'll break up with them on the following Monday or whatever. And he's, you know, very good looking guy, very popular. So he's constantly having a girlfriend, a one week girlfriend. And so one of his, I think, upper class classmen. So one of his senpai uh, runs into him on a Monday. And just through pure coincidence, he heard the rumors and all of the girls talk about him. So he like knows about this whole thing. And he offers, well, how about this week you date me so you have a chance to just, like, take a break from having to date a girl and in so far as, like, maybe you can just chill out with me for a week and not have to be the perfect boyfriend and try to be convinced to fall in love. And so, obviously, they start a friendship together and then slowly over the week they start falling in love with each other and then at the end of the week you have one character who's worried that he's going to be dumped by this other boy and now he has feelings and things are going to not end up well for them and then you have this other character who's worried about his own standards for love and how he's been searching for it this whole time and what he's really looking for in a partner it's good like it's not a perfect series but I do think if you're wanting something that does have that emotional side of a romantic relationship and again that like slow build up of a relationship it is a good place to start it was one of the first ones that I read in regards to having more than just oh here's some sex scenes this doesn't have any sex whatsoever so it's very tame in that regards but it is very obvious (laughs) in how and why these characters do grow to care about each other 
so much. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's a bit of a classic insofar as like this introductory type of series. And yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, check it out from Sublime. Yeah, I haven't actually read this one yet, so ah, it's good it's to sweet. hear the plug. <laughs> the next one I wanted to talk about, mm-hmm. I haven't read the very latest iterations of the series. I think there's like two I haven't read yet, but so far it's there's nothing explicit about it. Uh-huh. But I hear the sunspot. This has just one or two volumes as like the main series. How long was it? Um, there is. It's weird because the fourth volume is the second volume of the third sequel. Because there's I Hear the Sunspot and there's a sequel to it, kind of, which is Happiness. And then there's Mm -hmm. a ongoing sequel to that called Limit. And volume four is volume two of Limit. And that has not come out in English yet, but we do have the first three. Yeah, so it's kind of a weird continuity thing. Yeah. (laughs) But if you start with the one that doesn't have a subtitle, Mm -hmm. you're good. Yes. This is... A series with really beautiful covers, first Mm. of all. It's really pretty. This is a series about a boy who sort of inadvertently, if I remember right, gets hired by another boy in his class as a note taker because this other boy is hard of hearing and through that relationship of just being his note taker they become friends and then they become more than friends kind of yeah (laughs) yeah it's very i remember in college this was the one that was recommended a lot Mm -hmm. through scans Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) as like pl can be good guys and yeah it's really sweet it's not it doesn't have all that much romance Mm -hmm. But it is very good in terms of like a slow burn, just developing relationship between these two guys. Mm -hmm. And it's really good in its representation of a hard of hearing character. Yeah, no, I I really love I Hear the Sunspot. This is one that, again, like it's been recommended to me a lot in so far, like before it was licensed. I don't think I ever mm. read it, though, via scans. The scans were awful. Yes. I remember that. <laughs> but One Piece Books has licensed it. As I've mentioned, there's three out of the four or five volumes there are in Japan currently. They are beautiful. And as Ray mentioned, it does have a character who is hard of hearing going deaf and a lot of the series does focus on that aspect of it i actually recommend this series as a better representation of deafness than a silent voice yeah i think so this series has multiple characters who have different levels of deafness or who are going hard of hearing they have different experiences with it and different perceptions on it we have in the third volume so the first volume of limit we meet a character who has been deaf since birth whereas our main character has only recently started to lose his hearing there's another girl who is also losing her hearing and she's much more irate in that in which she doesn't want to just accept that as what it is um, and she's not really that close with the deaf community so there's a lot more going on in regards to actually representing that disability compared to a silent voice where yeah. they use as that. well as like I think it's so important if you really want to represent deafness in particular if you've only got one character and they're completely isolated from the capital d deaf community Mm -hmm. that's just not like there are individuals Mm -hmm. who are like that but it's just not an accurate representation because deaf culture and the deaf community are such a thing yeah (laughs) and it's so important you know to represent those yeah and in a silent voice we have sort of passing reference to sign language and like the sign language class but we don't really ever see any other deaf characters which 
does make it a very centralized series on Shokai and her experience, which is fine, but like it's not. Yeah, I feel like it's more of a representation of bullying Mm -hmm. and issues with bullying in the Japanese school system than it is about disability. I think another really great example of a series, well, it's not a BL series, but another great example of where a disability is is shown and given multiple perspectives is Perfect World. And that's a much yeah. more physical disability in regards to wheelchair users. And mm-hmm. you not only have your main male protagonist who is a paraplegic, but you have other characters who are at different levels of being paralyzed and having to use a wheelchair and their own personal struggles with that, why it happened, how it happened, and how they're dealing with it. It's really, really nice, again, to see multiple perspectives because that gives you a better idea. Obviously, like with anything, you know, individuals have different experiences with the things in their lives. And so for something like disability whether it be a physical disability or a more hidden disability like deafness it's it's so important to show that there are different ways that people handle this as a reader who is not physically disabled and doesn't have deafness i get a better idea of what they're trying to say and it gives the series more levity as well it gives you more perspective on that actual character when you can compare them to other people within that community yeah and i also um this one's out of print and it does have the issue of focusing on the parent Mm -hmm. of a child with a disability Mm -hmm. but with the light raising an autistic child um is also really good about showing like the community Mm -hmm. of you know the local special education system Mm -hmm. special education schools uh the different special education classes that hikaru is involved in as well as the local community of autistic people Mm -hmm. and parents of people with autism yes if you are Perfect World is coming to print next year, so it is currently available digitally. It's a great series if you're wanting to read it. Buy it. it. Buy it. (laughs) And although With the Light is out of print, you can still get it in its entirety via Kindle, so... Mm-hmm. check it out it's a good series too i think it was the first series yen ever published i think so and it's you can definitely tell it is more so uh, slated as a not educational series but it is for more a broader audience than manga fans yeah that's a series that is in every middle school library that i come across here mm. in japan that's good that's a really good thing BL. <laughs> um, so, classmates. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love classmates. Uh, yeah. So this is just, the movie is excellent, too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Pick it up. You might already know the author, Asumiko Nakamura, from uh, Utsubora. And this is very different from Utsubora, <laughs> but it still has her gorgeous incomparable art style yeah and this is just a very sweet wholesome realistic romance between two high school boys yes i think it's one of the most realistic (laughs) gay romances Mm -hmm. that we have in manga right now and it's good it's wonderful this series has i think the main series uh, the original, like, Dokusei Classmates has three... Well, it has one volume and then two, the Graduate sequel, but they're kind of clumped together as one. And then it has, like, 300 different spin-offs and sequels mm-hmm. and things, which is... I hope we see all of them, because I really love Nakamura's work. Um, the only other one of hers, aside from Utsubora, we have is Main Railways, which is great, so check that one out. Um, and one of the best stories yes. in Parasite F. Yes, it's the first one. It's, again, one of the best ones. We 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 just always plug the Parasite <laughs> <laughs> anthology, but they have some good but stuff like in there. But like specific stories. Yes, not the whole book, but <laughs> there's some good stuff in there. But Classmates, yeah, as you said, is wonderful. 
the film is only 60 minutes. It adapts the first volume or the classmates book in its entirety. It's 60 minutes and you can get the Blu-ray from Anaplex of America subtitled. I also had a um, film like a cinema run in the US which surprised me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously opened a lot of people's awareness to it. I know there was a lot of very positive feedback, but obviously being an Anaplex release it is pricey. I think it's 60 US dollars. I own it. I love it. It's it is a dollar a minute or whatever however people like calculate that price wise, mm-hmm. but if you save up for it and you're a fan of BL, it's definitely worth the watch. I don't think it's streaming anywhere, which is a shame. But yes, Classmates, wonderful. Ray's already you know, mentioned how, again, you see the, this development of these characters' relationships from the beginning and slowly like falling into their relationship and how much you know they grow to care about each other it's just really wonderful guys please support it seven seas is publishing it this is a series that had a difficult history with publishing because i june again english released it digitally and the translation on that was terrible i'm pretty sure it was missing a page from like their pdf it was just all types of not good. So yeah, it's it's had a bit of a rocky past in English publishing, but Seven Seas has finally given us this wonderful story in English. I cannot wait for the second volume or the first volume of Grad... Is it Graduates? I think so. To come out, which is very, very soon. Support it. It's really wonderful. And if you're... <laughs> it really was... I think the film was really the first anime BL that wasn't just like a really terrible toxic (laughs) (laughs) just awful yeah because predating this made on a three dollar budget yeah predating this was you know stuff like Junjo Romantica and Sekai Chihatsu super lovers super lovers um oh the other one uh dramatical murder uh, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and the other that was an incredible anime i don't know what you're talking about and the other one that's from nitro whatever it is the other game one i don't remember what it was called but oh my god they i i swear to god they had 200 yen and had to try and make it work because <laughs> there was so i watched one episode and was just like what is this how what how <laughs> what Is this even animated? It's unique. That's a word for it. Um, (laughs) Yes. So it wasn't until Classmates or DocuSay the film. And also I think things like um, this boy can fight aliens. This boy found a merman or caught a merman or picked up whatever it is. Also animated on 37 cents. Yes. But with style. Yes. And at least it it felt like it, considering it was like a one woman team. Somebody cared. Yeah, a one woman team it, as a student yes. trying to wrap that she together. She did the best she could. She did the best she could, and it's it's pretty dang good. Like, and it's only That's gotten good. better. Professional wizard is the best. Pick it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, classmates, you can see how much the studio respected it, which is not something that a lot of BL gets outside of BL fandom, and it it really signaled I think to me this transition of okay we're going to actually pay attention to our female audience and girls buy shit like we we spend our money and so this as well as well as like kind of pandery shows like free and you know whatever else is coming out really proved the market that girls will buy stuff that they enjoy. There's a lot of money to be there. We're a market to be mined. And so, yeah, Classmates was definitely one in so far as, like, the Western side, as well as the Japanese side, giving more credence to something that was not for a general audience, especially not for, like, the late-night anime otaku of (laughs) most anime fans. So, yeah, Classmates is good. I'm going to stop gushing about it. What else is on your list? Um, We've spoken about it already a huge amount of times, but uh, Mr. Minimart by Junko or yeah. Kombi Nikun 
Really wonderful. This is one that I read via scans before. I read all most of Junko's work via scans and unfortunately not a huge amount of her work has made the transition to licensed the other BL. one I really like is called um, Omamori Shima Suitsu Mademo mm-hmm. any of you Japanese speakers <laughs> yeah, she has a lot of really cute series um, and they're short they're usually you know a one volume she does have uh, some longer ongoing series but Mr. Money Mart is one that is out of print I think currently from June it goes in and out of print very often usually uh, all of June's books are always like way too much money if they're out of print I was very lucky and got it whilst it was in print it just came back okay so if you want a copy I'm not buy it now but... I'm not sure if it's out already yeah check their website because that's where all of their stuff is you're not going to reliably get it off of amazon you can get all of june's manga digitally as well so if you can't afford to get the print copy because it's 200 dollars, pick up the pdf it's way more cost efficient (laughs) but it is really wonderful and if you do love it then maybe keep an eye out for when it goes back into print because it's well worth the read. Really, really sweet series about a two two teen boys who work at a convenience store. One who has sort of the year previously been shut in. He got outed at school and was bullied and so he just withdrew, became a hikikomori and then It was only through family friends that he got a job at this mini mart in order to kind of re-socialize him, to bring him back into the world and give him a little more self-confidence. And he slowly falls in love with one of his co-workers who's kind of the complete opposite of him. He's very outgoing and a bit of a bad boy almost. But like a nice guy still. Um, He's cute. Yeah, he is. (laughs) And so it's their kind of this other guy's interest and curiosity in this quiet boy at his work. And again, their friendship slowly building as they work together. And then this one this one character struggles with falling in love with this other boy who he thinks is straight um, because that didn't work out well the last time and trying to hide his feelings. And yeah, it's very, like, it's so wonderful, guys. It's just really great. It hand- It's got a kitten. Yes, it does have a kitten. It, it definitely handles a lot of the darker aspects of, like, bullying and, and this kid having been outed. Um, not- The way this kid, like, the kids who used to bully him mm-hmm. get, like, their just desserts is yes. pretty epic. Yes, it's really good. And Junko's art style, if you haven't seen it, is really cute. In all of her stuff, this series, Kiss Him, Not Me, there, there's just something really appealing about her art style. I don't really yeah. know what it is. It's, it's just, really cute. It is really <laughs> cute, but in a different way. She draws really cute faces. Yeah, in a different way from Grow Fort Nakamura, which is also really cute. Yeah. Um, It's just really... They're both very unique styles. Yes. I really enjoy this one. It's a, it's another one that I it's, think like I don't it's not uncomfortable. It doesn't have any of the really bad tropes. Safe sex practices. Yes, which is always a thumbs up. I think we're kind of stepping into like okay, start here, then the next step, then the next step. If you are wanting to yes. try this sort of genre and you're not really sure where to start because there's a lot of there's a lot of duds out there and there's a lot of people who recommend those duds because they personally love them and they don't yep. really understand why other people might not like them, which is not a... Yeah, like, I mean, that's not if you're looking for the stuff that I think is sexy as hell, <laughs> you know, ask me. Yeah. I'll tell you, yeah. but... 
<laughs> but if you're wanting like a an intro to the genre, then these ones are probably better to get into than yeah. I just had one one more on my list, kind of in the same vein of being like you're kind of already okay with this BL thing. You don't mind the characters having a sexual relationship. Um, I think you have this one, but this is Future Lovers. Hmm. This is two volumes long. Yeah, I do. It's older. I had to think about that Who one, but I do. published that one? Uh, Dew. June? No, not D- June. Uh, Dew. D-E-U-X. Oh, okay. I don't think it's in print. No. But it's really easy to get. Yes. This is a series about two teachers working at the same school. They have sort of a drunken encounter (laughs) at the beginning of the first volume. And then at the entrance ceremony, of course, they have the moment where the guy of the two who's like out, Mm -hmm. who is in this case a very flamboyant character, Mm -hmm. uh, which I kind of appreciated because I feel like, you know, guys like that exist. Yeah. And... (laughs) They don't get represented in BL very much mm-hmm. because it's like it's not hot or whatever. Yeah. But um, I, I could relate him to some people I know in real life. Mm-hmm. So. He shows up at the entrance ceremony like, hi, I'm the new teacher here. And the guy who he had the encounter with is like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, but after that, it's just their budding relationship. They just can't seem to get each other off their minds. Mm -hmm. it's got some really nice interaction with characters outside the couple especially female characters so there's another teacher who is the ex-girlfriend of the same character Mm -hmm. and she does not remember their relationship fondly (laughs) but she's very supportive of him being with this other teacher there's a student who finds out and she's just nothing but supportive Mm -hmm. and then it deals with the semi character coming out to his parents and them having a more complicated response to that that isn't necessarily like we're kicking you out of the house but is still like not positive and he has to deal with that and decide you know what he's gonna do and then something else i appreciated In the second volume, the end of the story, they do talk about the logistics of essentially acquiring marriage rights in Japan right now, which in more recent series, you'll sometimes see characters get married overseas because if you hold a marriage license from certain foreign countries, certain parts of Japan will honor that. But the other way that you see a lot of queer people talking about here is adopting the other person into your family registry in order to get things like hospital visitation rights and the like and to be on each other's family registry. So I always appreciate any story that deals with the logistics of queer relationships in Japan like that. And there's also a bonus chapter where these two just grow old and they're like 90 together. And I really appreciated that, too. Uh, A series that is not really on my list, but it does a similar thing of characters growing old, like a bonus epilogue chapter, is The Man of Tango. Honestly, Mm -hmm. the main story of that is not one that I... Like, there's a lot that I like about it. There's other stuff that I don't like about it. It's one of the few BL that I found that has um, sort of these more muscular characters. It is definitely... I think the artist is uh, more of a gay komi creator than BL mangaka. I enjoyed parts of the main story. I didn't enjoy other parts of the main story, mainly in regards to somewhat dubious consent. But oh my god, that epilogue hit me right in the heart. And... <laughs> made it something very, very good and special. And that one had not only a couple that grew old together, but who raised a very large family together, which is really refreshing to see as well. So yeah, maybe check that one out if you're... It's not 
terrible like the main story isn't <laughs> terrible but if you're particularly sensitive to dubious consent in regards to alcohol consumption and then sex then maybe don't check it out but there's a lot of good in that story the other one that I wanted to mention in regards to adult adoption is The Moon and the Sandals, which is by Fumi Yoshinaga. That's actually her first BL title she ever wrote. And whilst it does have some aspects that are very of its time, considering everything else like that was popular in BL and that was coming out at the same time, it's very, very good. It's also another one with a really great both of those series that I mentioned have great female supporting casts who are both supportive and understanding and actually relevant to the plot and flesh out a lot of interactions between these characters. I honestly, The Moon and the Sandals is worth reading just for the story arc of the female character in that series. <laughs> It's really good. I also really liked the couple, the adult couple within that series, because there's two couples. If you're not aware of The Moon and the Sandals, it's very, it's out of print, but it's very easy to find. It's about a teenage boy who has a crush on his teacher, and he kind of tells him that. He confesses his love and is swiftly rejected, well, somewhat rejected, and then completely rejected by this teacher because he has his own long term relationship that he's been in for a decade a very well established long term relationship although there are some things that are a little bit unconvincing in that because they've been together a decade and they've never had sex like come, guys that's not no <laughs> like I'm sorry that's not could be queer platonic Yeah, they could be but I don't considering how these characters act once they do become sexual is I, I don't think that's the case I think it's just more so oh we're not gonna really talk about it until we're confronted with it there's also a relationship between teenagers which are which is a little bit more tropey but not too too bad and Yoshinaga is always really good at character stuff so I mean there's aspects of that I like but mostly it's the adult couple and then the female character who's like not even really obviously like she doesn't have a huge role in it but oh my god oh my god the the final like last bit of the story is her talking to her is so powerful Just, again I'm a big Yoshinaga fan I'm a big shill for her works and I enjoy most if not all of her BL but that one is definitely a good starting point especially compared to something like like Ichigen Mei or even Gerard and Jacques, which is good, um, but it's not really a romance series. Like, it's not really a series where the characters fall in love. It's You read it more so for everything that's going on around these characters, because um, it's set in revolutionary France, and there's so much interesting stuff going on and the, even the relationship between our main characters isn't like it's not portrayed as a healthy relationship and it's not meant to be a healthy relationship and then there's all of the issues with that like it's really good but it's not one that <laughs> yeah it's not one to recommend if you're looking for something like really heartwarming and sweet and and fulfilling romantic um <laughs> wants like you know i hear this on or classmates or seven days or whatever is i have a couple more in my stack to recommend mainly because you know there's a lot of good stuff coming out and a lot of stuff that's been licensed recently that's coming out that i'm looking forward to uh, ten dance is wonderful it's a very slow burn between two professional ballroom dancers, one who specializes in standard, the other one who specializes in Latin. This is a series where one of the characters is bisexual. Well, I both of the characters are bisexual, but one of them actually talks about being bisexual, so that's a good thing. But they are sort of rivals insofar as they're... The standard ballroom dancer is is definitely one of the elite he's on the world stage he he dominates competitions he's never won 
gold uh, in a competition or first place in a competition outside of Japan, but within Japan, he's like the best of the best. And outside of Japan, he's usually like a silver or second place winner. So he's he's certainly up there. Um, and then the Latin dancer, he is probably the top Latin dancer in Japan, but he hasn't yet made his debut into the world stage. And so... Um, this Latin dancer is approached by a standard dancer about helping each other learn the the other dances. So obviously help the standard dancer learn Latin dances and then help the Latin dancer learn standard dances to so they can both compete with their partners in the ten dance, which is a competition where couples have to dance all ten different types of dances. Uh, both standard and Latin. So because they obviously have their own specialties, they struggle with the other because obviously standard dance is very... It's it's uh, almost chaste type of courtship, um, very refined, very um, reserved, whereas... Latin is just complete sex appeal um, yeah. in how they... And it's reflected in their personalities, too. Exactly. So like they... the Latin dancer is very, like, you know, constantly flirting with everybody. Yes. Very, you know, loud and loves a good party. Bringing <laughs> the party everywhere he goes, honestly. Yes. And then the ballroom dancer is very serious and mm-hmm. studious mm-hmm. kind of got a bit of a stick up his ass <laughs> <laughs> um and it's a very slow burn for them um volume four is has just been released there's currently five or six in japan so we are somewhat up to date five. with it yeah so we are slowly catching up this is put out by kodansha the man of tango tries to achieve uh in regards to the seduction via dance and is much more successful with it not only because it's a longer series it's ongoing um and more than one volume but also just the characters personalities as you said there's some great chemistry there the way they interact with each other is very believable for who these people are and where they are in their life and what they've achieved it's just really really good to read and it treats the female partners well too yes yes you can understand like how these characters have gotten to this point with the partners that they've had because you have one couple like the latin couple who have been dancing together 20 years and then you Mm -hmm. have the standard couple who've been dancing for maybe four or five years and prior to that our standard lead male dancer he swapped you know he he switched partners a lot he couldn't really find someone who worked very well with him so you can see like they're also their relationships with their partners because of that it's just it's done really really well i like a good ballroom dancing manga i like a good slow burn romance and i like characters who have chemistry and ten dance has it all uh, yeah, so that was that. I mentioned Gerard and Jacques in regards to historical fiction BL. Uh, also, um, kind of a Total Eclipse of the Eternal Heart has elements of that. I wanted to also mention Blue Morning by Shoko Hidaka. It's okay. a eight volume series um, set in, I think, the Taisho period. Might be... Meiji, I don't remember. I think it's Taisho. And it's about sort of the, obviously, the early modernization of Japan, or westernization of Japan, I should say. And it's a love story between, like, a a young, young master from a good family and then his butler. Growing up together, but obviously there's this class divide. And Shoko Hidaka does a really good job. I really like her manga, but we don't have a huge amount of it available in English. The only other one I can think of is Does the Flower Blossom? And that is on permanent hiatus slash dropped by June, which is a shame. But yeah, this is... Oh, DMP. Yeah, good old DMP. But this one is obviously a historical fiction 
romance, class divide, uh, forbidden love, and there's a, a large part of it about like trying to overcome this division and then again the, the modernization or westernization of Japan. So it's definitely like this story of the aristocracy and, and, and crossing class divides and also fall, the falling of the type of samurai families that previously held so much power and then all of these things. But it's good. It's not like it's not really super duper easy to recommend because obviously it is more so historical fiction and it does focus a lot on the time period as well as the relationship so if you are just looking for like a cut and dry relationship then maybe go somewhere else but it has a lot of things that I wouldn't necessarily say that I enjoy in other series things like a fairly large age gap it has um, obviously this power difference, this class divide. I am a big historical fiction fan, so, oh, you know, that's that's fine. But <laughs> Hiraka does a really good job at tying it all together and making it more than the sum of its parts. We have seven volumes of it in English. It's eight in its entirety. I didn't actually know it was going to be finished at eight, but it's good. It's good. Um, there is... It is explicit, there is some sex scenes, but it's not like just sex scenes either. There's a lot of plot going on there. So <laughs> you're probably going to get one, at least one sexual encounter volume, maybe aside from the first volume, but the rest of it is very much political discussions about class systems and things like that. So it's worth mentioning that most BL magazines have a requirement about how many love scenes need to be included. Yes. <laughs> and how often. So you can get a series that is very much about something else mm -hmm. that gets a love scene every once in a while just mm -hmm. because it has to. Yes. And that's, again, like um, Jared and Jacques. But that one, like, even the relationship, the sex isn't as I said, it's not really a positive <laughs> portrayal of a... It's not meant to be a positive portrayal of a healthy relationship. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about Yoshinaga. <laughs> but the other Go one on. <laughs> that I wanted... Well, there's... Okay, there's two. One is... I had to mention Ko Yonada because I love her. But her, a lot of her series are very hardcore explicit. Um, there's yeah. there's always a plot to it, and there's always like it's always intriguing, but there it, like it's very explicit. So be aware of that. I love Twittering Birds Never Fly. We talked about that getting a movie soon. But the one that I'm actually going to I guess recommend or talk about is Even So I Will Love You Tenderly, which is mm -hmm. a sequel spin-off to No Touching at All, which honestly that book like is fine for what it is, but even so is so much better. <laughs> um <laughs> it's about two off like adult office worker friends who they work at different companies, um, but they've been friends a very long time. One who is a closeted gay man, the other who is straight or presumed straight and our gay friend has been harboring secret feelings towards his friend for a long time, but he doesn't want to really mention or act on them because obviously he doesn't want to ruin or lose his friendship with this other man. But then we learn that this other, this friend who up until now has been presumed straight, he develops feelings for one of his co-workers at where he works, who is actually one of the main characters in No Touching at All. That's like how it ties in together. But finds out that this other man is in a relationship with another guy at his work, which is obviously the story of No Touching at All. So he's sort of, he, he vents to his friend about his struggling with his sexuality and all of these things. And then it sort of ends up that, you know, he admits his own feelings to his friend and then 
Oh, you know, everything comes out and they sort of try to start a relationship because they are like they're friends so they care about each other and like I don't really know how, like it's it's very good and I really appreciated mm-hmm. that internal struggle that our main character had with like cuz he's very confident in his own sexuality. Like he knows he's gay, he's not worrying about oh i'm just in love with him because whilst he's not in a relationship with this other man he's having flings he's having you know sex with other men just whatever and then also how well that this other character goes through this trying to figure out his own sexuality and questioning something he's thought about himself for so long i really like yonada's frankness in how they act once their relationship does become sexual. It's just really good. And another artist who has a wonderful art style, very sexy art style. Um, yeah. yeah, she's she's a great ser- like she's a great mangaka. I love all of her works. A lot of them do focus on like very dark stories, usually about the yakuza. This one is not. Yeah. Um, and those are a little bit harder to recommend. But if you are a fan of very explicit BL and you don't mind darker settings, not so much tropes, but the issues of you know Yakuza and maybe those sorts of things, then definitely check her work out. And even so, I will love you tenderly is probably the best one to try. Yeah, as I said, no touching at all is is the parent story of this one but i prefer this one much more along the lines of someone who's very explicit Mm -hmm. but quite good yeah um, and quite accessible i think if you are okay with something that is very much a smut manga Mm -hmm. would be scarlet Berico. yeah so we have jackass from her and then we are getting fourth generation head something or other yes that's like a yakuza one and it yes. has another very suggestive cover. <laughs> yes. But um, I think her art is very, very sexy. She can draw a good pinup. Yeah, we have another <laughs> um, series that was just licensed from hers. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I have Jackass. I like it for what it is. It has a, a pantyhose or stocking fetish, but yeah. hey, whatever. So what I like about it is I will mention for those who can't stomach it. Mm-hmm. This does involve explicit sexual scenes between high schoolers. Yes. Yeah. And I know that's going to be like a no. Yeah. Hard no for a lot of people. It also has. Totally fairly. Yeah, absolutely. It has a student teacher relationship. Yes. Or a age gap. I can't remember if it's a teacher. I think it's, I think it's just a, oh, no, I think it is student teacher relationship. But that's the side couple and it's not really ever That's the beta couple. Yeah, it's not really focused on at all aside yeah. from m- mentions. So. I actually that side character is my favorite character. Oh yeah, he's great. He's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but his relationship is deeply problematic. <laughs> Uh-oh. He is very much in charge. Yeah. But <laughs> that's a whole other can of worms. <laughs> the main couple is very sweet Uh basically they start seeing each other sexually because one of them catches the other wearing pantyhose Mm -hmm. after a series of hijinks and the one guy has a serious pantyhose and leg fetish yes that awakens within him (laughs) upon seeing this (laughs) seeing this guy's legs and they start out as kind of sex friends and end up falling in love, of course. Of course. But I think it's a very, it's a nice exploration of two young people discovering their sexuality and exploring it Mm -hmm. in a safe and consensual relationship with each other. And then the beta couple's a whole kind of mess, but, (laughs) (laughs) you know. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting multiple other Bedico titles yes. that have the potential to not be like that. Yes, and I am. I look forward to Scarlet Berico's work. It's sort of like, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, so it is very divisive. But i honestly looking forward to all of Berico, Scarlet Berico's work that we're getting. The other one is 
uh, aside from Bitch Boo, like we we are getting more <laughs> more of her works as well. Ogeretsu Tanaka, yeah. Because Escape Journey had the first volume had, in my opinion, one moment of fairly dubious consent, which can be argued in regards to relationships and how couples fight and how people handle that and I was somewhat like I was actually upset because the entirety of the first volume aside from that was very very good and the rest of the series is also very good it's a good series like honestly it's one that I would hope that I could recommend to most people aside from that it's not even like a page it's like three or four panels and to its credit it doesn't treat it like it's a good thing either so i do give it leeway in regards to that but it just would have been better without it i'm just like well why why but yeah aside from bitch boo i think we're getting another one of her works and i hope it's a good one yeah so again she is a very uh, we're also getting liquor and cigarettes yes. from Zarya Ramaru, yes. which uh, we have coyote from her, which is something else. <laughs> but, um, if you like that one, if you sweet. enjoyed us talking about Omega Verse, it's not Omega Verse, but it does have werewolves. Werewolf sex. Werewolf sex. Check out coyote because um, yeah, that's a uh, that's a thing. It uh, it doesn't have. And Prague, no. but it does have a whole lot of heat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and she, she is a very, she's an artist with a very sexy style. So if you're into it, have fun. I, that's all I can say. We also have Void from her, but that's a digital only title and it's only available on Sublime's website because it's too spicy for Amazon. That's like, <laughs> man, that's a, like, honestly. If you want to hear my deepest, darkest BL <laughs> secrets, I would die for her pet Kayaku mm. in English. Mm. Hey, we all that we all is. have series that aren't objectively the easiest to recommend, <laughs> but we love them all the same. And I think it's good. Again, the shamelessness of BL. Yes, exactly. Speaking of online Yes, I, di stuff. I did want to mention a title that is released by Sublime before we get into the other online stuff called Night Beyond the Tri-Corner Window, I think that's what it's called, which is five volumes, six is coming out soonish, and it's a paranormal type of series where really there's no real romantic relationship between our care i mean kind of but it's not really a love story as of yet oh my god the whole series is pretty much just about uh it's just a discussion about consent because the whole premise is that one this one character he can i guess channel ghosts and then or see them and then our other character is sort of like a paranormal I don't want to say investigator, but he, you know, gets rid of ghosts and things for people. And so when he meets this other man, he takes him on as like a partner and he basically like puts his spirit or like channels this other channels through this other guy to take his power to be able to like get rid of these evil spirits and ghosts or whatever. And so it's not really a sexual thing well i mean it kind not really um <laughs> but it does it does bring up all of these discussions about consent because this other guy's like i don't want you to do this it feels weird i don't want it it's not i you didn't even ask me and then so it's this development of yeah having these discussions between people regardless of whether it's sexual though it, you know it's a BL, so there's kind of a sexual <laughs> element to it. Everything. Um, but overall, and there's a like a really interesting mystery about someone spreading evil ghosts. Like, yeah, it's good. It's actually really good. <laughs> and I wish it was in print so I could talk more about it, but it is digital only. Yeah, it's a good series. So check it out. Yeah, so speaking of digital. Yes. Futekia 
is a new digital player in the digital field, specializing in BL. Uh, not a lot of their titles have caught my interest, mm-hmm. but they are the one hope currently <laughs> for Haruko Kumota BL mm-hmm. in English. Yes. They have licensed for digital release her Shinjuku Lucky Hole, which is a longer series about porn stars. <laughs> it is, it's very explicit, but it deals with a lot of things in a very interesting way. Mm-hmm. It deals with issues of consent, of figuring out your sexuality, and of course the characters are very carefully crafted mm-hmm. in the way that you can expect from Kumota, yes. who is the creator of Descending Stories. And then there's also a short story collection called When We Were in the Rose Forest. This includes a story that is a very interesting take on vampires, very thoughtful take on it, as well as a story that is about actually an intersex male character who I guess has very feminine legs. And Uh it's another leg fetish one. (laughs) But it deals with sort of blurring the lines of gender, what gender Mm -hmm. means, and how it's more complicated than we really make it out to be. And uh, it's actually a very sweet little one shot. Mm -hmm. Again, explicit. (laughs) Yeah, I love Haruko Kumota. My favorite BL title of all time is her Itoshi no Nekoke. Mm. Or My Darling Kitten Hair, which is five volumes long with a prequel volume and a volume of side stories. It was in English, briefly, mm-hmm. on J-Manga, <laughs> R.I.P., but it is basically like a queer version of where you've got the main couple. There's Mikun, who is working as a mangaka and is an absolute disaster (laughs) (laughs) he barely gets dressed every day yeah (laughs) he's up all hours of the night and he was in tokyo for like five years after graduating high school and he's been in a long distance relationship with his childhood friend Mm keichan who was back up in hokkaido where they're Mm -hmm. both from and the series starts with Kei-chan coming to live with him in his crappy little townhouse <laughs> uh, in Tokyo. And Kei-chan is a good, upstanding country boy <laughs> who everyone <laughs> instantly loves because he's perfect. He's a little dumb, but he's perfect. <laughs> um, and then Mikun is a disaster human, but in the best way. <laughs> uh, Kei-chan is also like a 9 to 5 salary man and then it's just about them being cute and loving each other <laughs> and their quirky interactions with all of the weirdos who live in their townhouse <laughs> which includes a sex worker and her young son a trans woman who works at a gay bar and sort of a hippie stoner (laughs) who may or may not have a girlfriend but nobody quite knows what's going on with him and the townhouse is owned by Mikun's grandmother Mm -hmm. who is not happy about the fact that he's in a relationship with a man but every time it comes up Keichan just kind of sparkles in her direction (laughs) (laughs) and she's like well, whatever. Yeah, it's a lot the same appeal of like Mason Koku, where it's just like these weirdos living in a townhouse together. Yeah. And it's really funny, really relatable. <laughs> Haruko Kumota is an absolute master of having you laughing your ass off one page and like swooning at how cute something is the next page <laughs> and then just like steaming out your ears because suddenly it's like this super sexy <laughs> love scene um Kei-chan and Mikun switch which is very rare mm. in BL manga it's nice <laughs> <laughs> feels realistic they're not just sort of set in one way of having sex mm-hmm. <laughs> lights off missionary <laughs> you know even 
during the love scenes, it's like, it feels very real in how they're still just like chatting and teasing each other mm -hmm. while they're at it. It just feels like a natural extension of the rest of their life as lovers living together. You don't see that in a lot of smut, gay or straight. Yeah. But that's how life is. <laughs> so Yeah. And everyone should request it on every <laughs> publisher survey until someone <laughs> publishes it for me. Yes. Um, <laughs> speaking of Futakia, obviously you mentioned all of the Kumata stuff there. I do want to mention, because I haven't read a huge amount of stuff that's on there so far. Um, again, just because not some things just don't appeal to me or don't interest me. Um, the things that I do want to mention is that the beautiful greenness, um, the first volume is complete on there, although it's an ongoing series, I think. There's two or three. That one mm. is a little bit more fetishy in so far as like the S&M dynamic. It's not terrible. It's not the best, but that is by Meiko House Matsumoto, who, if people follow BL in the West, she does have a title called As Many As There Are Stars, something like that, uh, which is like an okay series, but um, <laughs> it's nice to have more of her work. I do actually really like her art style, um, even if I'm not she, like the stories aren't my favorite i do also want to mention shining stars in line which is a single volume it's done by the mangaka of my boy and each like it's a compilation of different stories like there's i don't think there's any crossover in regards to couples with that one it again with a lot of like one shot collections there's good and bad i again not my favorite but if you are a fan of that mangaka you're wanting more of her work maybe check it out and there's no weird shota stuff in there so don't worry about that <laughs> compared to my boy so those are ones that are like artists or mangaka that people will know probably aside from kumota but i also wanted to mention okay if i could touch your heart which is a one shot by tachibana I, man it's really sweet i really liked it this is <laughs> it's a one shot this is one that i wish there was a lot more to because it's just really really cute um it's about a i guess a, a freelance writer who gets roped in by his friends to write a piece for his magazine and so they visit a cafe or a tea house and the owner is this cute i say cute he's like this very sweet guy and then the, again like their relationship and it's there's nothing explicit about it and there's nothing um and it's a one shot so there's not a huge amount to it aside from just their their interactions and slowly realizing their feelings for each other and then at the end they're dating so it's Aww. it's uncomplicated <laughs> the art is very beautiful and i feel like tachibana i I'm, can't remember quite but i think this may be one of the doujin works that futakia is putting out rather than like their more general because there's a mix of stuff that's like published in japan through a publisher and then there's a mix of stuff that are just like doujin works that are self-published uh, i think this is one of those so it's very sweet and i like it and i also wanted to mention moja and i which is again one i think one chapter and i think might also be a doujin very very unusual i can't remember if it's completely in color or it does have quite a bit of color pages to it as i said very unconventional but it's about two friend or like two guys who are a couple but it's not really mentioned explicitly until later on in the chapter that have been together since university and they both i think went to art school but one is sort of the a struggling artist who is very he doesn't compromise on his artwork which makes it a lot harder for him to be successful and then his boyfriend who's i guess just a businessman or he works as a designer for a company or something and their relationship and i really like it because it's just like a really wonderful representation of like a supportive relationship 
and, and mm-hmm. uh, it's just really it's really sweet <laughs> check it out again only one chapter and i wish it was more there are more that's by uh ayu yamane i think she has a couple series on futakia but i haven't had the chance to read them but moja and i is a good one so check it out yep and then maybe last one Mm -hmm. uh i just wanted to mention one that is coming out next year Mm -hmm. later this year i don't remember that is not a bl but it's bl adjacent Mm -hmm. uh this is called uh metamorphose no engawa or the veranda of metamorphosis also known as the Fujoshi (laughs) Obasan manga. Uh, This was going around the internet a couple years ago because the story is about the very wholesome friendship between a 75-year-old lady Mm -hmm. and a high school girl. Uh, The older lady is named Shinoi, Mm -hmm. and the high school girl is... Urara. It's just about their friendship based on their mutual love of BL manga. And it was going around the internet because there was like a very memeable page <laughs> in the first chapter where like it's showing the manga mm. that the old lady is reading. It's her first BL. She picked it up in the bookstore because she thought the cover was pretty. <laughs> She didn't know what it was about, Um, and she's reading it under her covers late at night, and the two boys confess their love and kiss for the first time, (laughs) and it just shows her with her hand to her mouth, like, (gasps) Ara. (laughs) A whole new world has opened. Uh, Which every Fujoshi has had that Ara experience. (laughs) But um, no, it's I read it thinking it would be very gimmicky Mm -hmm. and it's not at all. Mm -hmm. It is the most wholesome, beautiful series about female friendship, how you can form a friendship with someone based on mutual interest. Yes. And fandom and fandom helping you realize that you're not alone, even if the friend that you find (laughs) is. From a very, very different area of life than you are. Mm -hmm. And I think as women, we do, uh, most of us, if not all of us, do have fandom friends that we've met through fandom, that we have stayed friends with because of, you know, that's how we met and our personalities are similar and, you know. Hi, G. Yeah. (laughs) Hi, (laughs) Ray. But, I mean, I have friends who I'm still in contact with from my fandom days in where I was Mm -hmm. more um, into, you know, like, Hunter Hunter fandom and whatever fandom. Mm -hmm. And I still talk to them, even though we're in totally different fandoms or we're not even active in fandom anymore, we're still good friends. And I think that's a great way to meet people who have get similar (laughs) interests in you, but also just... You know, this is, this is a great community. So. Yes. And, like, you don't really see any, like, of the more toxic tendencies mm-hmm. of some Fujoshi yeah. in this manga. You know, these are two very sweet people. Urara's very shy. <laughs> but, you know, Shinoi in particular, she's very open-minded. She just reads this stuff and she's like, oh, yeah, I guess these days, That's pretty normal, isn't it? And she just likes it because the pictures are pretty. (laughs) And, you know, she's got her ship she would die for (laughs) in her favorite manga. And, you know, they go to a signing with this mangaka. And uh, it's cool. And it's cool to see, like, people in different stages of fandom. Because, obviously, a shy high schooler interacts with a 75-year-old woman who has lived an entire life and sees her late husband in the love interest of her favorite manga. So I highly recommend you all pick that series up uh, when it comes out in English. Yeah. Especially if you want to see, like, a positive portrayal of Fujoshi subculture and just fandom in general. Mm -hmm. And fandom friendships. (laughs) Um, I have a couple questions that are just, like, brand new on this thing um yeah so i was thinking probably dylan's questions would be 
a nice lighthearted way to end. Yes. So, um, what are your favorite things about BL? Favorite things? I kind of already talked about it, mm-hmm. but just this f- explore completely unabashedly what you love, what you are into, mm-hmm. whether that's sexually or just, you know, food or <laughs> Paris yeah, or Yakuza stories or whatever. I love that BL first of all, creates a space that is, regardless of anything else, unabashedly queer. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important to a lot of... Most of the people I know who read BL regularly are LGBT. I know a lot of gay men, lesbians, bisexual and pansexual people, Mm -hmm. transgender people, genderqueer people, people all over the acronym who see themselves in BL Mm -hmm. just because... It is inherently an entire genre that is inherently queer, even though it has all kinds of problems. <laughs> I think that you shouldn't forget that. Yeah. And most of the people I see jumping to the defense of gay men for being oppressed by the existence of BL are straight men who have not bothered to talk to gay men, <laughs> just in my experience. Yeah. Not not naming names, but it does seem to be the general trend. Most of the most of the guys I know, like gay and bisexual guys who don't really like BL, still understand its value to the people who do like it, yeah. and are just like, "That's cool. You mm-hmm. like what you like. I like what I like." Mm-hmm. So my my feelings are pretty much the same. I also just really like how it is. Obviously, uh, I I'm not within. The LGBT acronym, but I do read pretty much anything if I enjoy the story, if it's written well, if the characters are good. But I do just really like that in BL, generally, mm-hmm. you end up with a ro- like just a happily ever after romance, and sometimes that's all you yeah. want. It's just <laughs> like a satisfying <laughs> love story between two characters. I don't care if they're gay or straight yeah. or whatever. It's <laughs> but it's it's nice to read and it's a, it is a normalization of that for a lot of people and i think that's why as you said that it is so important for the community but i do think also that's why a lot of straight women who do you know have no problem with the lgbt community also enjoy it because it's just you know it's a different type of romance fiction it's just enjoyable to read about two characters falling in love and finding their happily ever after. I also, and this is something I like about Yuri too, Mm -hmm. I like the length. Yes. (laughs) Usually BL does not overstay its welcome. Yes. It's like one to three volumes Mm -hmm. usually. Yes. (laughs) You know, get in, give us the goods, get out. (laughs) No, not 13 volumes of, of pining and miscommunication and... This or like that. forty volumes, yes. like Kimini Todoke. Yes, I I'm not I love Kimini Todoke, but it is it's a long series and it doesn't need to be that long. Um, it doesn't need to be that long. <laughs> it does not need to be thirty <laughs> volumes, but it is a very sweet series for what it is. No hate on Kimini Todoke, <laughs> but it is, you know, it's a it's a commitment. Whereas uh, one of any of the series that we've talked about, you, you get you have your satisfaction by the end of the first, second, third fifth volume it's not a super duper oh no what's gonna happen will it happen oh no uh yeah it's just it's the question is not will it happen (laughs) when how will it happen exactly when will it happen how will it happen and let me see the happily ever after damn it (laughs) so this is followed another question by dylan um, is what are your least favorite tropes within BL? I think we've talked a little bit about this, but um, rape. Yeah, rape. Rape equals love. No means yes. The really toxic- underage yeah. and adult age gap romances. Yes, I- I'm not a huge fan of age gap romances in general. Like that's just not something I particularly enjoy. But it seems to be very prevalent in BL, especially. It's very popular right now. Yeah, especially with, like, individuals who are in their teens and then their partner who's in their late 20s, mid-30s. It's just, eh. Also, as a teacher, 
Mm -hmm. I do not like student-teacher romances. Yeah. I can't even think about them, honestly. Like, if you're into it, you know, within the realm of fiction, Mm -hmm. that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. But that's, like, hard no for me. Yeah. I'm... I'm much of the same. There's, I there's very. I don't think there's really a student teacher romance that I've enjoyed. I also don't like. We've said it again uh, before, but like the really heteronormative stuff, and that sort of goes mm. hand in hand with a lot of the rape stuff. And, or just dubious consent. There's also, like, obviously because it is part of this fantasy, um, and it, all of these things as well that we've mentioned are not unique to BL or Yaoi. You see this, a lot of these tropes in romance fiction written. Yep. It's not something that is only but written by these mangaka. It's they're written by these mangaka because it's fulfilling the romance tropes and expectations and what's popular. There are so many women with rape fetishes. There are so many women who like the power imbalance. And that is totally cool if you're into that. Uh, but that's why those things show up so often in not only BL but just romance novels in general. Um so yep. You know, it's, it's, this isn't, it's not an attack on people who enjoy those things in their fiction. And, but it's also not a a vilification of this genre as this is where it started. This is, you know, the, the root of the evil, um, because it's not, (laughs) it's (laughs) BL is a response to women wanting romance and having particular tastes in their romance. And uh, obviously all women have different things they're into, different fetishes, different wants and needs and satisfactions. And, you know, that's that's reflected in BL. That's why we have so many different types of BL. And obviously for us, we, we don't have the same tastes as a lot of people. But that doesn't mean that it's inherently wrong for you to enjoy those things if you're if you're happy with them. There's also in regards to certain relationships. Uh, I've talked about like the power imbalances, but there seems to be a lot of just again, you see it more so with late 90s early 2000s stuff with the and we mentioned this already, but the rejection of bisexuality and just like this, oh, I'm only gay for you and <laughs> This, this humming and hawing and these characters will be having intercourse and they're like, oh, I don't, I'm not gay. This isn't like a total rejection of that. Um, it's only more recently that we have had characters who are open and accepting of their own sexuality, which I'm not saying that every gay person is, obviously, but there's, I don't like this... Uh, trope that used to be very common of but, but we're, we're both boys we're both men this is not this isn't what's done it, you have to wonder how if some of these people have even heard of bisexuality or homosexuality I'm like, it's not like it's a totally foreign concept but for these characters it is and it's very infuriating so yeah yeah I, it's it's boring and kind of cliche and there's just better ways that that can be done that internal struggle so yeah <laughs> so next question is who's your favorite semi i don't like personally favorite I, top yeah <laughs> favorite top favorite quote-unquote man of the relationship um big chin big hands <laughs> long <Small> fingers <laughs> Long fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think uh, about this because I don't... I always like, notice the bottom more. Well, there's that. And also a lot of the couples that I like, even if it's not necessarily what's shown in the BL, like I always, in my brain, I always think of a lot of couples as switching. So I don't really assign <laughs> roles to people because I don't read a lot of mong- like BL manga that is just strictly this. Uh, yeah like the the big chinned versus the yeah. chipmunk I'm to think. <laughs> mm. eh? I'm trying to think this is hard 
It is really hard. That's what he said. Ha. Ha. <laughs> Would it be controversial if I suggested that Oscar in the Heart of Thomas is a top? Nah, I think that's fine. I'd pro- I think he's a switch. Mm, yeah, I mean... I think there's, as I said, for me, I'm like, all these characters are sw- like, they're happy switching, but you know. Well, to be honest, whatever. like a big part of the gay community here in Japan mm-hmm. is most of the gay men and lesbian women I've met within the LGBT community here identify very strongly as one or the other. Yeah. So that's not like an invention of. Oh, the of course. L. Of course not. And I think also there's some, there's you know, queer people in the West who are the same. If you have a preferred sexual role, and that's fine. But I think, obviously, it is very... Oh, you know what? Uh Uh-huh. That guy from Mr. Minimart. Yeah, that guy. I like him. I'm going to say one... I agree with that. He is very sweet. Um, One who is not... I mean, not technically from a BL manga, but the doujin he that is more mm-hmm. explicit is um, Kenji from from uh, What Did You Eat Yesterday? Because All right. those two have a very strict, you know, relationship dynamic. Shiro prefers bottoming and Kenji prefers okay. to be the top. And that's what... I didn't know there was a doujin. Yeah, there's three, actually. And they're... That'll look very up. good they're good check them out so yeah i'm sure that's based on yoshinaga's interactions with the gay community yeah and it's it's done well because obviously if you well i mean it's not obvious from ken jinshiro's personalities necessarily but it is like the fact it that makes sense it does make sense <laughs> and the fact that shiro likes to you know just relinquish the power during the sexual experience is seems very in line with someone who's probably always having to take control of his work situation and is very meticulous and controlling with the rest of his life so yeah and i think like he dotes on kenji a lot Mm -hmm. through food Mm -hmm. so it makes sense that he would want to be doted on exactly so yeah, there's check out the te- check out the dojin. They're pretty good. But Mr. Minimart's a good one. Um, I'm trying to think of like explicit. Oh, oh, what's his name from um, Twittering Birds Never Fly? He's good too. And in regards to UK, <laughs> I, I like him. Um, Favorite UK. Yeah. The next one. Favorite bottom. Yes. I have answers for this. Good. Yay. Um. So I really like when the UK is like super tsundere mm-hmm. and like <laughs> more traditionally masculine and gruff than mm-hmm. the semi. Yeah. And I will give the example first of uh, what's his name? Lily. So it's Lily and Marlene from Coyote. Mm, I like yeah. Lily. He's the werewolf. Um, he's really cute. <laughs> um, yeah, he's always really gruff. And he's like, you can't know me. I have to stay secret. Mm-hmm. But then he goes into heat and it's like, never mind. For a week. <laughs> An entire week. <laughs> he's cute. Mm-hmm. And then I just read the last volume of this. This series is not available in English, Mm -hmm. but I have talked about it on my channel. (laughs) It's called Red Barrel Ni Sayonara, which is by the creator of The High School Life of a Fudanchi. Mm -hmm. Most of her stuff that isn't these two series is extremely kinky (laughs) (laughs) and questionable, but this one's pretty vanilla as far as things go. It's very explicit. It's just vanilla. Mm -hmm. But it's about vampires. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Very on brand. And very on brand. It's one of my favorite BL series now. Um, It's a romance between a human guy who's like 19, I think, who like has kind of given up on life, 
but he almost dies in like an accident mm-hmm. but he's saved by kazushige who in the process of being saved also reveals he's a vampire because <laughs> he gets impaled through the chest and he's like no i'm fine i'm good <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> so akihiko the other guy mm-hmm. basically insists on being his almost his housekeeper i guess Mm -hmm. cooking and cleaning and stuff as repayment for saving his life and of course they fall in love but kazushige is from the meiji era he used to have a wife and a daughter who they grew up alongside him and then died of old age Mm -hmm. while he never aged a day pretty standard vampire stuff yeah the meiji setting is kind of unique i thought Mm -hmm. it takes place in the 60s like their relationship does Mm -hmm. uh but anyway obviously he's the much older character and he's very tsundere (laughs) um and he's like i can't be with you i can't lose another loved one and just gets railed (laughs) (laughs) and it's great (laughs) (laughs) they're really cute he's a He's a good uke. Ah, that's good. That's good. Final question from Dylan is, who's your OTP <laughs> BL couple? One true pairing. Mm. Mikun and Kei-chan. Itoshi no Nekoke. Even though we were talking about how BL manga never overstays its welcome, I would literally <laughs> read 300 volumes of Mikun mm. and Kei-chan just living their lives. Yeah, no, they're great. Um, I love them. Maybe Hikaru and Rihito from Classmates. And they, they do have like a bajillion sequel spin-offs. Okay. So that's good. I don't know. It's hard because I like, f- well, for majority of the BL manga that I read, I like all of the couples. That's why I'm reading it. Because that that's yeah. the story. This is their relationship. It, I wouldn't want to be reading it if I didn't like the characters. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, probably those two. Maybe, um, maybe the two from Mr. Minimart. They're very sweet. And... Oh, Oscar and Eric. Ah. From The Heart of Thomas. Yes. Well, how could you forget? They're not officially together, but I have to talk about The Heart of Thomas, <laughs> so. I love both of them a lot. Obligated. So. It's your duty. I ship them so much. <laughs> and... The last page, where they're leaning on each other, is my treasure. And I like the two Shinyas from Ten Dance as well. They are wonderful, and they're great. I look forward to their continued relationship in the future. OTP, like obviously one true pairing, um, another fandom term for those not in the know. Uh, but I always think of them as like not pairings that are actually pairings. I mean... Like canon? (laughs) Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I would say these characters are canonly pairing, but, like, if we're talking anime, it would be, like, victory, and then, like, a non... Well, I was, like, avoiding things that are male-male relationships but aren't necessarily BL. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Because I really... I have a big flame going for... Tetsuo and Taichi in Yureto, which I'm mm. reading right mm. now. Yeah, I like honestly, I have, and I, I mean, this is maybe not a surprise to anyone, uh, but I am such a big Mako Haru fangirl from Free. Like, holy <laughs> shit, that there's just everything that I want in a relationship, those two. But like, obviously, it's not canon, so I don't want to be like, yes, this. Yeah. This is my, I mean, it is my OTP, but like, <laughs> maybe non-canon a OTP. non-canon OTP. Um, mine would be, oh lord, <laughs> I've got so many. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> it's so hard to choose. Um, Tsume and Toboe from Wolf Serene are good. Yeah, they're good. I was big on the Rinharu train. Uh, I'll fight you. <laughs> don't fight um, me. But I understand. I'll but then you. Sosuke came. How can you? <laughs> I can understand the. I don't like Sosuke. Oh no, my poor boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think he's adorable. You no, know, he's wonderful. See another 
Tsundere. <laughs> yes. Okay. No, absolutely. I don't disagree. He's a power bottom. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, he is. Um, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just super weak for childhood friends. And I, not to say that free every character isn't a childhood friend with everyone else, but like the neighbors thing is just, oh, oh. <laughs> It just hits me. I'm in the big heart. on um, Vanitas and Noah right mm. now. Mm. They're good. Noah's also a power bottom. <laughs> Miharu and Yoite are great. Great. I mean, they're kind of canonical, but not explicitly. <laughs> so that's another one that I. Everyone read Nabarno. I try to get everyone to read Nabarno, but it's so hard because it's not in print currently. <laughs> Or anymore but it's mm-hmm. it's so good and i want more people to read it and i'm sure it's on my list i'm sure everyone <laughs> like myself was like oh ninjas but then also oh it's yuki kamatani maybe i should read this yeah. and then it it was it was so good like give it well i have to read shonen note first oh, i i want that I series license in english so much that's one that i put on every single seven seas survey i i just i need it in my life i'm just um, yeah big sucker for that i mentioned i was in hunter hunter fandom for a long time but gonna kill his relation i wouldn't call it like an otp but it's definitely one that i was invested in for i'm deeply invested in them yeah I'm deeply invested in Kiglu. Yes, exactly. In particular. Exactly. And and I am thoroughly convinced that he is canonically gay and in love with his best yes, friend. Yes, fight me if you think And I will fight. If, if you think I will fight anyone. If you think it's that's not the case then no, we can't be friends. It's it's just yeah, it's just so <laughs> obvious. And, it's so obvious. Um oh, you know what? Mm-hmm. Trash OTP of all yep. time. Toga and Sionji. <laughs> okay i actually love them together mm-hmm. hey ab- um they belong together <laughs> they deserve each other um one day they'll graduate <laughs> and be better people and they'll be beautiful together mm. after they realize that they don't have to compete over every single mm. thing yeah i have so many feelings about those trash boys rtp is there's the good ones that you you dedicate your... I mean, all of them you dedicate your whole heart and soul to. And honestly, like, for me, I don't know if it's the same for anyone else, but, like, you'll be out of a fandom for a long time, and then you see art of your OTP. You'll see something, or it'll be mentioned, and just all, all of a sudden, it just comes flooding <laughs> back, and you're like, oh my god, I forgot I was so invested in this. Huh. <laughs> all right, speaking of my... Oh, yeah. It's not really a trash OTP, and it's kind of canonical, and this is going back to my dark past. We've been talking <laughs> about Hitalia. Sweden and Finland? Uh-huh. Oh my god. I, those <laughs> those two, I, lo- mm, I love them. Finland's such a cutie. I was, oh my god. Oh, my Hitalia OTP was deeply cursed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to guess? Hmm. Oh, there's so many. How, how, mm, <laughs> I don't know. Let, tell me. Russia and China. I, I had a feeling, I, like, I knew it was something, someone, Russia. I knew Russia was in there because, Rochu. because Russia is always in the most cursed pairings. China, mm, yeah. Yep. I, that was a very popular. Because they're both, like, fucked yeah. up with their, like, violent past. Yeah. So they're, like fucked up together but they're also kind of hurt comfort mm. in a way mm. and if you pair russia with literally anybody else it's like a horribly abusive relationship <laughs> so yes that's why i wasn't sure just like in real yes. life that's why i wasn't sure it's like okay is it gonna be like russia and china or is it gonna be like russia and latvia like some like lithuania yeah someone something. Lithuania and Poland were great. I love them. They're they're mm-hmm. great dynamic. I love Poland. Poland is wonderful. He is America Japan. Mm. That was my America. <laughs> so on... um, I didn't like US UK yeah. because it's like a family thing. That was such a that was such a popular ship, and I never got into it. I was like, oh, okay. I always read 
the pairing abbreviation as you suck. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Because like... <laughs> no one puts a slash between them. Uh, yeah. All good. So, yes, that's all of our answers. I'm sure you guys learned way too much about us <laughs> in regards to our tastes it's and okay. our, our dark. You'll learn even more about me next month yeah. when we talk about Yuri. No, it'll be good. Let us know your thoughts on particular titles, your own experiences with BL, your own perception of the genre, whether you are a fan or you've never tried it but you want to or you just never even thought about trying it. We like to hear everything. Give us your recommendations as well. Yes. Your favorite BL titles, whether they're English titles or only available in Japanese. Yeah, we've got some people who listen to us who can look those up. So Yes. This has been... A lot of fun to talk about a topic that I think it's fairly prevalent and fairly normal, but I think a lot of people do feel this, at least with Western fandom, this kind of shame to talk about it. There is a stigma around it, and I just don't, I, I don't feel that you should feel bad about enjoying BL, especially if it's something you're enjoying and having fun with it's it's a fun topic and obviously august is is yaoi month or well 801 is yaoi day so i thought it was very yep. appropriate for this month but yep. yeah as always thank you guys so much for listening i will put ray's social media and her channel in the description below if you are not yet subscribed to her please do she is wonderful my social media will also be there next month will be yuri so we'll be talking about girls kissing girls and all that entails yay, yay! so as well if you are wanting to ask us questions for that podcast that we answer like we did with this podcast um let us know either in the comments or via twitter we are there and available and we are reading everything and we do try to address everything. So see you till next time. Bye till then. See you guys.